Hello, folks. We're waiting a few more minutes for a few more people to join. Sorry for the delay, folks. Richie's computer's acting up. He'll be on shortly uh, to join us. And welcome, everyone. It's our first. Hello, hello. Uh, it's our first time. Okay. While we're while we're waiting for the last few uh, to join, uh, I would like to say welcome, everyone, to our first actual SIG observability meeting. Um, as a SIG, as a newly formed SIG. Um, this is a CNCF event and the code of conduct applies. Uh, so uh, everyone be yourselves and I'm sure it'll be great. Um, Amy, let me know in the future if there's an actual script I'm supposed to read there. Nope, um, you are good. Okay. Um, let's, let's, give, uh, <laughs> let's give Richie one more second. He's, he's gonna be online shortly. Um, All right. Uh, so uh, I hope Rich, Rich will be able to join us. Um, uh, why don't we go around the room and give a little quick intro? I know I haven't met some of the folks here, um, uh, and Steve just joined as well. Uh, uh, so uh, maybe we could start with him. Uh, last one in, first one out, <laughs> or first first one up rather. Sounds great. Hey folks, my name is uh, Steve Flanders. I'm a director of engineering at Splunk. I am an open telemetry uh, collector approver and have kind of been in the observability space here for just under a decade at this point, working in the logging space at VMware. I was at a uh, sort of called Omnition. We helped uh, co-found the Open Census Service and uh, now working on open telemetry uh, for metrics, traces, and we just recently started a log SIG, so logging coming up as well uh, to really make it easy to get uh, telemetry data out for both applications as well as kind of an agent and collector. And super excited to be here today. Uh, 
I guess we don't have a, a consistent list in order, so I'll just go from the top as I see them. Uh, Jonah? Yeah, Jonah Cowell here, uh, CTO over at Logs.io, and um, just getting us involved in uh, what's going on around CNCF and some of the standards, and we're looking forward to contributing and participating, so thanks. And Amy? I am the program CCF. I'm actually currently busy trying to let a whole bunch of other people into this room. So, uh, good to see oh. you all. I'll continue to that. Work on. Rock on. And uh, Bartok? Is it my turn, Bartik? Yeah. Cool. I, I heard some yes. Okay. Hello, my name is Bartik. I am Principal Software Engineer at Red Hat. I'm a prompt use maintainer and co-author of Thanos. And yeah, I was involved in observability for a long time as well and super happy that this is started. So yeah. Cool. Uh, surreal. Uh, hello, Cyril Leclerc. I work for uh, Elastic, where I am a product manager uh, working on observability on uh, Excited to be there as well. Thank you. Well, you know what? Why don't you guys can just, uh, <laughs> we're going to be working a lot together. Uh, don't make me read down the list. Just everybody say hi and we can self sort. Uh, I'll go first. My name is Matt. Uh, for, first of the unsorted. Uh, my name is Matt Young. Uh, I'm uh, VP of Cloud Engineering at Everquote, uh, where we're running uh, Kubernetes and a bunch of CNCF projects across a couple different clouds. Yep. Let me go next. I'm Richard, uh, working for Grafana, Prometheus team, and uh, the second chair together with Matt. I can go next. Uh, I'm Gautam. Uh, I'm a Prometheus and Cortex maintainer, and I've been up involved with Prometheus, hence ob observability, for nearly four years now, and I work at Grafana. Hey, uh, I can go next. Um, so I'm Matthias. I work with uh, Bartek on, uh, like, at Red Hat on uh, Thanos and Prometheus and Kubernetes and whatever kind of observability and go uh, things we, we need to do. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Pranay. Yeah, hi folks, I am Pranay. Uh, I am uh, co-founder at Signos. Uh, we are based out of Bangalore, India. Uh, we are a pretty young startup working primarily on monitoring and observability. So happy to be here, participate and learn from you guys. Thank you. I guess I can go next. Uh, I'm Kemal. I also work with Matthias and Bartek at Red Hat Observability Platform Team. Yeah, I am also a contributor to the Thanos project. Anyone else? I just joined Morgan McLean from Google. Hey, hey Morgan. Hey. Uh, did we hear from Thomas yet as well? I noticed he's here. He joined us. No, nope. sorry. Uh, I'm here. I'm an uh, engineer over at Buoyant working on uh, Linkerd for service meshes. I'm Yurish Kuro from Uber, uh, maintainer of Jaeger Open Telemetry. Cool. Uh, I don't know if we got everybody or if anybody else wants to go. I'll give it 10 more seconds and then we'll we'll get rolling here. Three, two, one, ten. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, so we have, uh, uh, th again, this is our very first time meeting as a SIG. Uh, so I'm sure we'll have uh, bumps and starts. We have um, 
uh, more potential work streams and things to do um, uh, than is even able to be talked about in one quick meeting. So I'm very excited by that, as well as excited that we've got a sizable turnout uh, and a lot of uh, interest uh, from both open source and industry um, um, participants. Uh, does anyone see anything on the agenda that we think should be there um, that's not? Or is there any kind of hot things? Uh, feel free to just uh, write stuff into the agenda. Again, this is meeting number one. Uh, the process is emerging. Um, and I want to make sure that we're not too prescriptive about what we do or don't talk about for this this first meeting. Okay. If there's nothing, um, so there's the AOB at the end, and I left in some some time on purpose. But I think we're quicker with the janitorium and stuff. Anyway, a uh, quick update on current TOC status. Um, we sent email to the TUC list on both um, getting the third chair approved, uh, Steve Flanders, who's also on the call, I think. Yep, I'm here. Yes, there he is. Um, and also getting uh, Bartek as um, the tech lead. I don't think I saw any answers to either email thread yet. Yeah, no. Uh, like, I don't know. Um, I'm going to poke CNCF uh, or the COC about, about uh, actual votes on this course, obviously um, that, that falls on TOC to, um, to either ask questions or to vote. Um, I hope that we will get questions and or votes soon. Of course, that would be better yes. than not getting them. <laughs> so uh, please add that to the uh, observability kind of update in there. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't really hear you. Uh, next Tuesday should be the next TOC meeting. Okay, and you, we should be adding this to the agenda? Yes, you have a slide on the agenda. Perfect, then I will write that down and take this as a to-do. Or actually, let's let's check to do this in the document. I'm just going to do it impromptu and we can figure a good way out after. Put okay, so that's basically the update of uh, on the TOC. There's nothing uh, nothing else to be to be said currently. Um, overview over initial work packages. We have identified two work packages for now. Um, one is Cortex incubation and one is Thanos incubation. Um, of course, those are kind of um, currently in a in a place to be to be evaluated. Cortex in particular, they uh, they did all the steps which uh, need to be done for review. If people are in this document, if you click the GitHub link, I can also screen share if you prefer. But you can just click that GitHub link. There is a well, a process uh, which Bartek copied in, basically the SIG needs to, to make a recommendation um, and then the TOC will be uh, reviewing that recommendation and, and decide on if they, want to, if they want to proceed with incubation for that project, yes or no. And then there is more, there's due diligence that's not clearly defined who will be doing it. I suspect that part of this will be falling uh, back on us and part of it will not be and then Basically, uh, that's the way it will be going. So um, I know uh, Bartek has some thoughts around what he wants to do in the Cortex review. So maybe Bartek just uh, says a few words about what he thinks he would be doing. Sure. Thanks, Ruchi. So, um, so essentially, we are pretty close with the Cortex team, right? So we are talking about this um, kind of graduation process uh, for both Thanos and Cortex, because like those projects are pretty similar. And essentially what we need to do as a, as a SIG observability is we need to provide some kind of recommendation based on the graduation criteria uh, from sandbox to incubation, right? Um, and there is no clear form and like template for such, such thing, but our idea is to create something that will kind of um, fit into the due diligence document template 
um, and there, this template is like well written and there was like formal um, kind of template for that. So um, this actually answers, you know, those great criteria, graduation criteria, but also um, it will be just easier for TOC to create like official due diligence. Um, we hope so, right? So um, I think that would be the idea to just focus on the, on the document for Cortex first and then maybe for Thanos. Um, we thought about sharing those kind of because the project are super, super similar, but like uh, after some discussion, it's not, not, not um, doable because the questions are really personal per project, let's say, like what customers you have, what's your usage, what's uh, your kind of committers um, kind of base looks like. So um, ideally it will be kind of similar, but again, we need a proper document per each project. Um, so yeah, that's the first step. And one um, kind of idea from, from my side is that it would be nice to get also um, the maintainers of those projects to, to build this document with you together or like with us, right? Um, so we can collaborate on this and just have it quicker, I guess. Um, so uh, like as one of the maintainers of Cortex, uh, first, thanks for taking this up. And second, how can we help you? Like, should we, fill out the due diligence review template and share it with you folks. Yeah, I think that would be that would be the way to go. Okay. Yeah, I think that was the most helpful when we did Jaeger presentation to TOC. It's like maintainers know the best how to answer all those questions and then we can take it from there. Uh, in addition, um, I was going to mention the Jaeger, um, both the Google Doc and then the resulting markdown, which is a little more um, shorter. Uh, are both, I think, a pretty good example of a due diligence performed effectively and, and deeply. Um, um, I think the, the interview is a good idea. Uh, on the other hand, we should be mindful of, of the meeting time which we have and try to do actual work also outside of just the meeting. So, uh, so writing things down, both questions and answers and, and assessments and everything under the week, in my opinion, is even more important than having a, a interactive uh, Q&A. On the other hand, having the Q&A sounds really like a good idea and we should probably schedule this for a next call. I've also put in links over into the chat as well, linking over to both the graduation criteria, which I know there was a question about, as well as the due diligence. Um, and the last link is the flow chart for how this actually works. So this is part of both the SIG review as well as being able to get a TOC sponsor. Correct. Yes. Awesome. That's the that's what um, um uh, was linked in the GitHub issue as well. Uh, the cool. same chart. So cool. So, uh, Gotham, do you want to take an action item of making sure that we have a critical mass of Cortex maintainers in the next call for any questions? Okay, yep, will do. And for everyone else, uh, be more than, uh, feel more than invited to, to put questions. We can either uh, put them in, in Slack or on the mailing list, or if people prefer, I can also just create a new document where we can, yeah, maybe let's do the document right now. Any, any vetoes towards the document? Um, so I would suggest that we do this after the, like after Bartex performs the evaluation and then shares the results. I think the questions can run, can run largely in parallel, but I don't have a strong opinion. Both is fine in my opinion. Yeah, definitely can, can be in, in between. I think, it, I think it might also make sense as part of all of this for both Cortex and Thanos and anything else that the SIG is going to provide uh, assistance with the due diligence on uh, would be to engage with the community and send out a survey to see who's actually using Cortex and Thanos uh, or Thanos or both <laughs> or, or whatever uh, in, in production or in staging or, or 
you know, perhaps the end user community would be a good place to start um, just to kind of get, just to make sure we're not missing any people that are already within the umbrella of the CNCF and have direct experience with these that could lend insights to that. That might also be a preparation or, or uh, input to the TOC course they need to do user interviews anyway. Uh, Amy, do you have any thoughts on if we would be preempting or, or doing the work of the TOC differently but slightly wrong or would this actually be helpful? Amy? Did she leave? I yes. think she is not here, yes. She yeah, she left. I'm going to poke her on I'm going to poke her on Slack. I, I just want to avoid that we end up in a situation where we basically do the same work subtly wrong and then TOC has double the work or the users complain or they have to do it twice. Um, just yeah, the moment. second. So okay. question from my side, let's say we have this evaluation doc, let's say we gathered all the input from, from the Cortex team, how we agree as a, as a kind of observability seek group um, that our, I don't know, review is, is correct or not, is the voice of the seek not only, I don't know, maintainers and me or things like that? Call for consensus. I, uh, I I strongly believe we should be following ITF rules on how to uh, how to attain rough consensus. Um, of course, that's that's been shown to to work reliably in in pretty much all situations. Um, and if the SIG as a whole finds rough consensus, that is something to take and bring to TUC. But that's not the chair describing or prescribing for the whole uh, group how we should be doing it. That is a, an opinion which is open for debate. So anyone who has different opinion, now is the time to voice it. Of course, we will be starting to set the tone for the whole SIG over the next few calls. Makes sense to me. Any objections? No, sounds good. Yeah, I assume we're talking about what is it, RFC 7282 <laughs> on consensus and humming in the ITF. Uh, so, sorry, can you repeat? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, it sounds great that there's actually an RFC on this. <laughs> yeah, there is. Um, I've been referring to this, I don't know how often. <laughs> I try and structure much of, of online work based on the ITF guidelines because they have been better proven. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, then that is probably the first consensus of this group. <laughs> then let's play, then that's actually something, um, if you can look at the document for a second, that's how I usually do it in a Prometheus team. I call it the game of consensus. Let me see. So now I have this written out. I'm just looking for the RFC so we can actually um, link the correct one. And the way which I usually do it is I mark it. Ah, oh, thank you. Ask the whole group to please read it and either speak up or you have agreed to it. And only if there is consensus, then it's marked green. 
Uh, also, this kind of uh, implies that the at attendee list should be should be complete. Of course, obviously, the people who are on this call have now agreed on whatever there is consensus on, or we note if there is no consensus. Like if there is someone who strongly disagrees, we just write below it, person X, Y thinks we should be doing deathmatch in person instead. And we just note this down to, to give the, the dissenting voice an actual voice and not just ignore it and, and minutes of meeting that, that dissenting voice away. So is there a consensus on this one? Three, two, one. Very good. While this call is ongoing, you can still voice concerns after you can't. <laughs> so, um, as far as the uh, SIG structure, we are uh, supposed to have chairs and uh, tech leads, right? Um, yes. the, I, I don't remember the charter uh, exactly. Does charter give any specific rights to just members who are not chairs or tech leads? Because if not, then the other option to solve in this is simply a vote uh, from the tech lead uh, on the email thread. Uh, yes. This is how TOC votes, and so we could do the same thing. Uh, and so, yes, the, it is still like consensus because if someone objects, then people need to, uh, I guess, um, resolve that, or you can even do simple majority vote. In my opinion, um... The, the the role of chair is very much one of facilitating and and finding consensus and feeling possible consensus if there are disagreements it's very much not overriding the group uh, also i would prefer not to have votes on things where we don't need to have votes on of course a there are uh, harder to override or to adapt later when when new facts emerge or something and also they're just more hostile overall it uh, the the atmosphere of the group tends to be better if we are doing consensus based decision making as opposed to vote based decision making that being said for example we can if need be introduce a mechanism where we vote on something uh, for example having a recommendation to the TOC but I would prefer not to. We can also have a system where Matt and me and potentially Steve or hopefully Steve will, uh, will approach uh, TOC and say, this is an actual decision by the chairs. But again, at least personally, I wouldn't prefer to do it this way. I would much prefer to, to actually work based on rough consensus as per ITF. But again, this is not me as the chair saying, this is how it needs to be done. This is me as a member of the SIG saying, I think this is uh, this should be done this way. Yeah, um, Amy, we don't have Amy here to, to really um, give the official uh, uh, voice of the TLC, uh, but I, I am hopeful and, I, and I'm optimistic that in particular for things like uh, due diligence evaluations of projects that want to graduate from sandbox to incubation uh, that we do this, uh, you know, sort of together uh, with a consensus-based approach. And, you know, I think if we have like a lot of division around just the fundamentals of our requirements being met uh, or is a project stable or meeting, meeting the criteria to move from one phase to another, that these aren't controversial. Um, and, you know, I, I agree. I, I don't want to spend too much time being litigious up front if we can just work together in an open way uh, we're we're inclusive, uh, and we're and we're being careful to over communicate uh, and welcome, uh, you know, various viewpoints. And and out of that plurality of, of of views and experiences, you know, we can have a, a, a true consensus from the SIG. Um, I think that also it's my understanding that as a SIG, we're free to make our own rules that work best for us and the. The role of a chair as prescribed by the TOC is really, as, as Richard said, to facilitate, not dictate. Um, you know, we're, we're really here to, to foster a community and let that community self-govern and self-organize. Um, does that help uh, Yuri answer the question or? Yeah. And, and also if folks have, you know, this is our first SIG, uh, it's my first SIG involvement uh, with the CNCF, uh, at least. So if there are other folks from other SIGs that have feedback or insight uh, into 
as we move forward, please be vocal. Just as an update in between, um, Amy asked me to suggest uh, um, user interviews to TUC next week, which I already put as a to-do for myself. And I already asked her if it's fine to run on consensus. She, she's currently busy in a different meeting, but will get back to us hopefully within that meeting. Uh, within this call, I mean. I had a question. Uh, what's, what's the role of the TOC liaison uh, for the SIG? Uh, not very clear to me. I'm not 100% clear either, but at least part of the responsibility and part of the role is to, to basically be our, our interface towards TOC. Uh, which obviously is also at least in part being overlapped by us simply being part of the TUC calls and, and being able to, to talk for ourselves. I would say that person is most likely the default sponsor for anything where we say something should go for incubation, something should go for, um, for actual graduation. I think though that person is then the default sponsor. Also maybe a person to help navigate things if things need to be navigated. That's at least my rough understanding, but it's not completely spelled out that I could find, but I might be wrong. Yeah, um, and uh, I, I had a fairly long conversation with Brendan, um, our liaison, Brendan Burns. Um, uh, uh, he, he has a lot of deep experience in CNCF projects and, and you're Matt, muted. You're yourself. Shoot, I'm so sorry. Um, still getting used to Zoom and, and working in isolation. Uh, both. Uh, <laughs> I had a long conversation with Brendan Burns, um, uh, you know, uh, to, to, sec to secure his involvement as our, as our liaison. Uh, he, he's an advocate for the SIG at the TOC. Uh, so he's in, you know, if we need something that we're not getting, uh, if we need either funding or logistical support, or if we're orchestrating things like TOC votes uh, on, you know, once some of these due diligence things are done, or if we're making other uh, recommendations, uh, he really is the, um, our advocate and our proxy in that voting capacity at the TOC. So, and again, I'm sure I'm butchering and I'm sure this is not a complete definition, uh, but as I understand it, that's roughly his role. Um, his role, however, is not to be, um, I mean, he, I, I welcome his involvement. I hope he joins us in some of these things. I think he has good perspective, uh, but um, he really is there to advocate for us, not do things necessarily with us, at least as prescribed by that role, if that makes sense. Mm, it does. As an update, <laughs> I got the next answer by Amy. This is actually working pretty well. <laughs> um, in the charter operating model, as a starting point, let's be inspired by CNCF OSS projects and by Kubernetes 6. This means minimal viable governance and community-based organization. Um, looking at Prometheus, um, that's pretty much everything based on consensus, uh, as far as we can possibly make it for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, I would say we are completely free to define whatever we want to do with the explicit recommendation to be as lightweight as we can possibly be. So I would say um, it's well within our rights and also the intention of CNCF for this SIG to be consensus-based. So that being said, I think that consensus um, can stand as it is, that we follow ITFF consensus rules. And if it turns out that we can't, we'll just change it. Like if we, if, we, uh, if we tend up, or if we end up fighting all the time, we will have a vote-based system anyway. Of course, that would be the only thing which would get, it all, get us out of that hole. But until that time, and that time is hopefully never, um, let's do it lightweight and, and consensus-based. Objections? Cool. 
Okay, we diverged massively from, from uh, Cortex. The only open question which I still have is, should we have a rolling document for questions, updates, whatever regarding the actual um, evaluation of, of a thing? And let's, let's cast this wider than just Cortex. Should we have one single document where we collate everything which is related to review of that thing? Or should we be doing this in GitHub issues? Or should we be doing this in, in our normal meeting notes? I wouldn't suggest you do that, but just to have the option. What, what do people think? Rolling document issues, pull requests, markdown, I guess you mean some kind of questions or like uh, suggestions for the next um, evaluation or things like that. What was useful, what was not, right? No, more like ongoing stuff. So um, I'm, I'm somewhat worried of questions being overlapped or dropped if they're asked on Slack or on IRC or on the mailing list or in the call or meeting in person once we are able to do this in two years time or whatever. Um, and basically having one project or one review or one workflow specific default document. From my side, I mean, GitHub issues make sense for like asynchronous um, reporting, but uh, maybe it's too, too, too heavy, not sure what people think. If you expect discussions, then Google Docs are better because there's a, they allow more fine-grained threads. And so GitHub issues become pretty heavy in that regard. We found that when forming the charter as well. We started with a GitHub doc and just iterated there and then moved it to Markdown once it had solidified in sort of a rough consensus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I think that part that document should then become part of the permanent record. And I think if we do a PDF export of the document, then we can also export all comments, which would basically allow us to, to, to snapshot the whole discussion and then just make that part of the Git repository and be done with it. Which, I mean, also link back to the document, obviously, because of course then you have the live source. But for, for pr prosperity, it probably makes sense to just drop the PDF into the Git and be done with it, like to, to document that, that thing. Should we try it this way or any other, any other suggestions? Uh, the, the, only question, the only question I have is if you are doing Google Doc, how do you prevent uh, random editing? As in, like if it's publicly editable, anybody can edit. We have the timeline. If there is abuse, we can either lock it down to named accounts or we can find the, the person who did it if it was a named account and have a conversation. Yeah, what, what we did with the charter document too is we enabled it for uh, comments and for like suggestions. Uh, and then, you know, initially it, it wasn't a problem. Uh, that way people can, you know, make suggestions and we can review them. Um, you know, I don't want to be too prescriptive, but no. we have a fairly small set at, at, at the moment and I'm guessing we're all going to get along well. Yeah, I think that's okay. can start with editing, right? And uh, the, the trust is high. And so if there is issues, then we can switch to just the comments only. Yeah. I, I would also tend towards the same, um, of course, it lowers the bar of entry to newcomers. And that is something we should actively strive for, in my opinion, at least. Um, I don't really believe in solving technical problems, uh, sorry, social problems with technical solutions unless it's really about locking out. So yeah, that, that sounds good. I mean, we have Morgan here. We can just ask him to deliver until next call. <laughs> We're only locked in users can, can edit a document, which is- So we, on open, telemetry, on open telemetry, we, we ended up for some of them ended up switching to comments only, not because of like people being individual, people in the community being bad actors, but there were some where we would just get literal spam, like literal, mm -hmm. like, like advertisements getting pasted into documents by I assume bots. Uh, oh, so no. Some of them, some of them, we ended up switching to comment only. Though I think yeah. many of the meeting notes are are publicly editable. 
As long as the link isn't like if the link is just embedded in the calendar invite, I doubt too many bots are going to find it. It's it's more if the link is posted on a web page somewhere that something will probably happen yeah. eventually. But we always have the edit history. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we can always change it. So it's no big deal. Yeah, truth be told, when we did the charter stuff, I, after every, before and after every meeting, I made private copies of it just because I wasn't sure if there would be a bot attack one day. And it would yeah, just... I don't. The, I think yeah, even if you give other people edit edit access, they can't change the history. So I, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, we can set it to open to edits, and if it's a problem, then we set it to comments only and explicitly invite people. I, I had one or two uh, instances where I actually needed to troll through um, through the history for reasons, and it worked fine. And yeah, in yeah. one or two cases, I actually had to revert stuff, and it was yeah. super easy. It's and I never saw anything yeah. lost. That being we said, had this for the public. We had this for the public um, Prometheus ecosystem call recently, where exactly by the time quarantine started, we, we got trolled by by people joining Zoom calls, and then we had to revert the the public doc and restrict it, and it also worked without any yeah. problems. So I wouldn't worry too much. No, but this is this is um, actually correlate. I mean, we are diverging from the initial topic, but this is actually highly co correlated. When I was still doing staffing for Freenode, I actually had all the school holidays worldwide in my calendar. Uh, simply to know when the trolling would take up again, of course, all the <laughs> adolescent people stuck at home with nothing to do. And that's the same for the lockdown. But uh, those, this has quieted down quite a bit as far as I can see. So yeah, yeah let, let's start open and we can always lock it down more if needed. So do we, let's, game of consensus, I would say. Let's go back. Um. Uh, well, while you're typing, I, I can't remember, we actually just talked about it, but I would assume that after we've kind of reached consensus in that sort of document, then there is a, form, a more formal markdown and a PR so that GitHub becomes, and the SIG observability repo becomes the ultimate source of truth. So to speak. Yeah, makes sense. We can, we can easily uh, copy that stuff over. That's not something which, uh, which I've done previously, but it makes sense in this case. Of course, this is more rolling. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. We can even maybe have a, a consensus.md where we just track consensus items back to where it was made. So you have a short overview with also where the source lives. That should actually be quite lightweight to do on the side. Yeah, I like it. So I'm marking this in the document. I hope everyone is in the document. I can also read it out. Uh, suggestion for consensus. We have one rolling document where work package. This document is as open as possible and we can lock it down if there is abuse. All agreed? Good here. Sorry, what? Good here, agreed. Good. Objections? Very good. <laughs> yeah, AOP is any other business. <laughs> hey, I'll be vulnerable and transparent and say I didn't know what it meant. No, so, it's, it's fine. It's fine. I, I I used to hate the term, and some at some point it just became part of my vocabulary. Yeah, I I was a stinker, and I populated any other business with a couple of things that um, had I prepared a little bit better um, this morning initially. So should. Is there anything more for Cortex? I think not. Of course, we spent ages on Cortex. Mm, okay. We figured out a bunch of stuff along the way. That's cool. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm like, and by and large, at least from my perspective, having this kind of ambling thing where we sometimes switch focus and just talk about more stuff, as long as we get shit done, is totally fine. Um, it, it's, it's mainly about getting shit done, uh, but like, Touching other topics can sometimes be super useful. 
So, Thanos. I mean, it's totally the same uh, discussion as with Cortex. The question only is about, uh, you know, how, um, when to to kind of touch it. Uh, should we do it? Can we do it in the same time? Why we all kind of switching contexts and blocked on uh, something? Should we totally don't touch it before? Yeah. yeah th this one, I actually wanted to throw a question out. I mean, to, to all of you. Thanos and Cortex, in many cases, have contributors that talk quite a lot. There's some code sharing going on, which is healthy, uh, between the two projects. So do we want to treat the due diligence for Cortex and Thanos together holistically? Uh, or do we want to make them separate, potentially parallel work streams? Um, I could see both being valid. What do you all think? In my opinion, they should be two separate things, but obviously there will be tons of overlap. So I think we should be encouraging to just basically copy stuff over where it makes sense, but we should end up with two distinct recommendations for DLC. But that's my opinion, not my, my statement. Like, what do others think? Yeah, from my side, two distinct things. Uh, two separate things make sense. Uh, the only question is like, can we have those two distinct with things in the same time or doesn't timing matters, right? From, I, I think there's two, two possible answers. One, especially at the beginning, we shouldn't be overloading the sick with too much work because we don't know how much work we actually get done. So we should be more optimizing towards getting stuff done and not opening new, new, new stuff. On the other hand, especially with Cortex and Thanos, it probably makes sense to treat them more or less at the same time, because a lot of things will actually be the same for the two. And also a lot of things will be, will obviously be overlapping with Prometheus and you can just refer to, okay, that's how Prometheus did it and see over there and they already graduated. So I think it's somewhere in between. But again, what do others think? Gotam, any, any feelings from the Cortex side? if Gotham is even here. I'm looking. Probably dropped. He dropped him. Uh, let me poke him. But yeah, I, I think he'll agree. I mean, I, I'm not him, but I think he will large, he, he won't object at least. Yeah, I spoke to Gotham and Tom offline on wiki and they were both into into um <coughs> waiting on this channel side as well so yeah it looks like everything is in an in agreed direction i think So as we actually seem to have agreement on this, let's do the dance of consensus or the game of consensus again. So, proposed consensus. Cortex and Thanos should be treated as two separate work packages and, re and result in two, uh, two separate... Okay, let's start again. Cortex and Thanos should be treated as two separate work packages and re result in two separate proposals for TOC. But we should leverage the overlaps. Objections? So 
Sounds good. Okay. Any other business? Uh, should we just move into what was written below or I think yes, of course, that's the order of whoever came up with stuff. Okay, work stream ID, create CNCF observability roadmap. Um, who put that in? Who wants to talk about it? Uh, I did, and I just realized I have my mic muted while people saw me while I was typing, so sorry. Um, yeah, one of the things we talked about during the charter was just having an initial graphic or something that's just a subset of the overall CNCF roadmap for CNCF projects related to observability. Uh, particularly since there's a lot of different projects in overlap, there are other SIGs. Um, so this is sort of a initial site content to, to provide a, a, a lexicon and or a pictorial viewing of all the CNCF projects related to observability. Um, again, I, uh, perhaps we, uh, I, we I would propose we just create some GitHub issues for these and people that are interested in working on them can start uh, and can self-organize. We can use the SIG observability channel. Um, I don't know if we're gonna lose them. I, we're almost out of time here, but that was one idea. Most of the stuff there I put, uh, Steve Flanders, uh, when I talked to him uh, a week or so ago, um, had a cool idea as well. Uh, I don't know, I don't wanna speak for you, Steve. Yeah, yeah, I can talk about it real quick. So basically the idea is to kind of show off some of the observability projects uh, in a more concise way where you uh, can kind of get a feel for what's out there, what's available, how you can stitch things together, uh, how you can like get started versus like get to a production environment. Uh, I think it's a good way for different uh, project teams to even collaborate with one another. And it also gives an opportunity for everyone's kind of opinions and thoughts to be shared. Um, it's pretty common that you'll see like experts in the field kind of talk about their particular area, maybe on Medium or on their own personal blog, uh, but being able to bring in a kind of a more diverse uh, community of people that are kind of in the observability space and some of the problems they're trying to solve, be that blog posts, videos, training, demos, presentations, what have you, I think would be extremely valuable just having a, a, a constant stream of, of information that's being provided that people could subscribe to and, and uh, just learn more about what's possible in the observability space. Constant stream or reference where we, where people can look up specific user stories. Because what you just said would fit both, but what is it both or is it one or is it the other? Um, I, I think the it's kind of both. The idea would be that you could go to a place where there is information that's being released. It's not like a one time dump and then it's like relevant three, six months down the line. Uh, but the idea is that it's constantly updated. Like conferences happen throughout the year. They're of course virtual now. Blog posts typically happen on some sort of regular cadence. At least that's ideal instead of just like one time and then nothing for months. Um, but some of this information may be reusable. So like videos, maybe you don't have to like re-record the same thing over and over again unless things change. But I think the idea would be that there should be some sort of cadence where like materials being released pretty regularly. Uh, that way you can get a feel for things. And if it grows big enough, this could even be different categories. Uh, so maybe it focuses on a subset of observability or maybe it so, uh, focuses on like stitching things together. So kind of open-ended to start, right? I'm kind of curious what the community as a whole thinks, what would be possible, uh, but just bringing some of this material together and starting to show off some of these projects, I think would be extremely valuable. The, the one, con I agree. I think it's a good idea. The one concern which I have recently in Kubernetes, there was a thing where it was more or less like advertising content on official Kubernetes channel, which led to some fallout. So we should have some 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 standard, maybe some some written down standard of of bare minimum of what what technical level of of proficiency you need to actually get into this distribution. Because if it's going to be abused as a sales channel or as a marketing channel, we will all have a bad time. Other than that, I think we can just go ahead and try it. Yep, no, I agree. There definitely needs to be some sort of like contributing guidelines here uh, of what the expectations are. This is not meant to be a sales thing. It's the goal is to promote and show off the observability products in CNCF and how you can get them together. Uh, but I totally agree there needs to be some guidelines in place. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, it's it's it seems as if it's almost the same people talking. It's the same. I mean me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like basically, I agree, and I also am very 
like slightly concerned with what you just said. Like there were a couple of, of blog posts all over the place in, in the like last two weeks. So I, I definitely see that. And I think, I, I don't know, like, I guess we, we, we could have something where people kind of like can propose blog posts or whatever uh, resources they have. And then at least like some, some people, how, how, how many the, these are, I don't know, but like someone from, from the six should look at them and at least like say like, Hey, this, this seems somewhat reasonable. Whereas we've seen things that were just bluntly wrong, sadly, which is something that we shouldn't promote. Right. So, like, uh, otherwise I'm super happy, like, like promoting all things observability. I mean, that's like literally what we're here for. Right. So. Yep. Cool. Like, I guess, Steve, do you want to take a stab at maybe yeah. drafting some of those guidelines and then we can bring it back to the SIG for consensus? Yeah, let me let me start a doc on this um, and then we can switch around and get people's feedback. Um, I think we have, what, four more minutes? Um, the, the third one is really a restatement of the first one. Uh, so the, the last thing, uh, I wanted to make sure we at least threw out there to think about for next time is um, in our charter, we had called out a lot of stuff we've already talked about. Um, I think webinars and presentations uh, is actually a little bit even more well-formed than what Steve was just talking about. I'm, if I understand these are, these are directly from the project contributors or the, the projects themselves to actually do a more deep dive webinar. Um, so perhaps, generating a backlog of those is something that we could do initially. Uh, and then I was curious if there were any folks on the call today, uh, we can talk in the Slack channel as well between now and the next meeting, but uh, working groups are something we can opt to form. We don't have to. Um, and I put a link to the charter and in the charter, there's a link to the TOC's definition of a working group. Um, but does anyone, want to start a working group on any particular subtopic or subdomain? You mean start making webinars and such or? Uh, no, I'm sorry. In the interest of time, I just skipped along to the third bullet there. Uh, so as a SIG, we can opt to form working groups if, if that is like, if there's some uh, okay. working groups are meant to be time bounded. They're meant to be like here, like, for example, we could as a SIG just say, hey, we should have an observability roadmap and someone passionate about this can like make a cool graphic and submit it as a PR and we can be done. Or if we wanted to make a more in-depth, longer report that says here is the current state and we should probably do this at some point. Here's the current state of all the projects and the, what we expect to come and like when they might want to graduate to the next phase and it's a much more in-depth, you know, accounting. That might be something that a, a working group does and they, you know, they form for a, a month or two or whatever it is, but in some time bounded way with a, with, a, with a measurable outcome. And then they can go have their own meetings and, you know, they're, they're part of the SIG and, and that working group can then bring it back to the ultimate, to, to the larger body. I don't know if we have enough people, but I just want to make sure that if anybody had come today and said, I want to go start a working group because I know what they are and I think we should do it. I wanted to make sure that they had some airtime in our first meeting. That's all. Gut feeling, to be honest, I'm somewhat worried of starting all the things at once. I would much prefer to see outcomes, like the, 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 the time boundedness and the measurable outcome, I like very much. Um, I, I'm not convinced we are at a stage as a, a newly formed group where we can already start splitting out without basically relying on this kind of cadence and, and synchronization mechanism of the call of the channel. But I, that's not me saying, no, we shouldn't. I'm just worry about doing this day one. I, I, I concur. And again, to be clear, I'm not proposing that we form working groups now. Uh, but I, I, again, I want to make sure if somebody showed up to our very first meeting and that's what they really wanted to go do after reading our charter that we, we let them have a voice. It sounds like, it sounds like that's not the case. So. I guess that inverse consensus, silence is a sound. 
I, I think we can establish silence as agreement to whatever was said, because else with 15 or even more people, hopefully over time, it will become really unwieldy. Okay. Oh, we're actually over time. I, I should already be in the next call. <laughs> um, yeah. I think, I think this call was like scheduled until te uh, 10 minutes before the hour oh. went. Good point. But oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's yeah, a bumpy person. But... It, so. I won't complain. Anyways, see you right. next time. Thank you for, for taking care. I yeah, think thank you everybody. Thank Good you. for the first meeting. See you. <laughs> bye bye. And then there were two. Uh, yeah, I actually wanted to leave, but I didn't. <laughs> ah, I'll catch up later. See ya. Yeah, see ya. Thank you. Bye.